Hello, in this video I'm going to cover how to convert between structural measurements that are in azimuth convention and those that are in quadrant convention. Prior to watching this video it may be useful to watch or re-watch my videos on basic Brunton operation. Taking a trike and dip measurement with a Brunton compass and taking a plunge and tread measurement with a Brunton compass. I'll have links to those videos in the description. And Brunton compasses either are in azimuth convention, such as we see here, the outside ring, which you take your compass direction measurement with, is in a 0 to 360 manner. And here is a Brunton compass that is in quadrant convention that you can see all compass directions are in a 0 to 90 degree measurement, but also includes north, east, south, and west directions as part of that measurement. So to familiarize ourselves with the compass wheel that I show here, I've highlighted the cardinal directions north, east, south, and west. And I'm going to gray out the center part now and just focus in on the quadrant convention that I have listed on the outside. Now, not every single 360 degree angle is shown here. I just show every 10 degrees. But you can see for quadrant, all the measurements in the northeast quadrant all begin with north and end with east, and then you have a two digit number in between. And it counts up from zero at north, so north would be zero, zero east, and north 10 east, north 20 east, etc., all the way to east, which would be written as north 90 east. And then in the southeast quadrant, we can see we count down from 90, and then the two cardinal directions, it starts with south and ends with east. And so south would be south, zero, zero east. In the southwest quadrant, it follows the same pattern, of course, where we begin with south, a two-digit number, and end with west. And then those two-digit numbers increase from zero at south to 90 degrees at west. And then lastly, the northwest quadrant, we begin with north, the two-digit number, and begin with west. But notice the pattern that north 90 west is west, and we count down from there back to north, north zero, zero east. And so the cardinal compass directions, of course, have two ways that they can be written in quadrant convention. And I've highlighted that typically, and although this isn't universal, the one that is not grayed is probably the preferred method to write it. So north would be north zero, zero east, east would be north 90 east, south would be south zero, zero east, and west would be north 90 west. Okay, let's take a look at azimuth convention, where, again, north has two ways of being written, 000, zero, zero or 360 degrees, but 000, zero, zero would be the preferred method to write it. And then, of course, it increases in value all the way around the compass wheel, 360 degrees. So we count up to 90 degrees, and keep in mind that the leading zeros are important as three-digit numbers distinguish an azimuth compass direction from, say, inclination-type measurements like dip or plunge, which are going to be two-digit numbers without a leading north, south, or tailing east or west. And likewise, we count up from east at 090 to 180 degrees for south, continue to count up to west, which is 270 degrees, and of course we complete a full 360 degrees back around to north again. Like I said, preferred method would be written as 000. So conversion between the two conventions should be a skill that all earth scientists or geologists that work with compass directions should be comfortable. The quadrant convention was more popular historically, but in today, the azimuth convention is typically preferred. But if you look at historical textbooks or data that was collected some years ago, it could be in quadrant. And because Brunton compasses are so rugged and last for decades, an old Brunton may be in quadrant 
and maybe all that you have access to, even if you're more familiar with azimuth. So what I'm going to go through now is the equations that allow you to convert between quadrant and azimuth. So looking at the equations in the upper right, these are the equations to convert between the two just for the northeast quadrant. So we can see that if we want to go from quadrant to azimuth, all you have to do is drop the north and the east from your quadrant measurement and add a leading zero. If you're in azimuth and you want to go to quadrant, you would just drop that leading zero and add north and east. And so an example is the azimuth orientation would be 0, 050, 0, and the quadrant would be north 50 east. In the southeast quadrant, the conversion is this. If you want to go from quadrant to azimuth, you take 180 and you subtract the quadrant digits from that, and that leaves you with the azimuth measurement. If you're in azimuth, you take 180 minus those azimuth measurements, and that gives you your two digits for your quadrant measurement. And then you add south and east at the beginning and end. And then so an example is azimuth of 150 is the same as south 30 east in quadrant. In the southwest quadrant, we would take 180 and add the quadrant digits to that to result in the azimuth measurement. Or if we have azimuth and want to go to quadrant, we take the azimuth orientation, subtract 180 from that, and that yields your two quadrant digits. An example there, south 80 west equates to 260. And then lastly, in the northwest quadrant, we take 360 minus your two quadrant digits to give us our three-digit azimuth measurement, or we take our three-digit azimuth measurement and subtract that from 360, and we end up with our two-digit quadrant measurement, and we would add north and west. An example would be north 60 west in quadrant, 300 degrees in azimuth. And so I'll give you just three examples here, and we can do this both to strike and dip measurements of planar structures, and we can do it to plund and trend measurements, which we take for linear structures. In my first example of 00803 east for a planar measurement in azimuth, that would convert to north 08 east 03 east in quadrant. Now, I provide this example just to show how the leading zeros are important in that, again, azimuth is always a three-digit number, and so you want those two leading zeros for the eight-degree example. And then inclination, in this case specifically dip, is a two-digit number, and that's why we need the leading zero on the zero three. You can see when you do the conversion, the only thing that changes about the measurement is the compass orientation measurement, which in strike and dip is your first number. The dip and the dip direction do not change. And just another example, 14356 southwest in azimuth is the same as south 37 east, 56 southwest. And we can do the same in plunge and trend measurements, where a plunge of 26 towards a trend of 328 would convert to a plunge of 26 towards a trend of north 32 west. Again, here we can see that the plunge of 26 degrees is identical, and there's no other changes except the conversion of the compass direction or trend of 328 to north 32 west and vice versa.